Okay. Welcome to the next edition of the spring football uh, recap videos. This one is brought to you by Primary Residential Mortgage Incorporated. Whether you're, you're buying, refinancing, taking cash out of your home, PRMI can help. Uh, you can reach them at lendingwithpassion.com or prmiraider at primeres.com uh, level. How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, that's our man, Jim Mitzel. Appreciate him sponsoring uh, videos like this one. Uh, doesn't matter where you live, uh, he can uh, he can take care of you uh, remotely uh, in the Metroplex, uh, where, wherever you're, uh, wherever you're, he's a great Red Raider. Um, yeah, so uh, you, you mentioned spring, and here we are kind of, you know, mid-May, but uh, yeah, we're just kind of going through the, the, the various positions, kind of giving everybody a uh, what it looks like post spring, maybe headed into into the summer uh, months, um, and I guess we're we'll talk about quarterback here. One position, <laughs> yeah, one position where if Micah Hudson wants to make a smart decision, he has to go to Texas. It can only end one way. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of that on social media. That was the 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 hot thing at the end of this week. But anyways, um, here we are. You have. Uh, two guys who have played last mm -hmm. year due to health and, and really two guys and then kind of the rest uh, when it comes to, you know, the real QB1 competition. Uh, how do you think uh, the, the room sits as we sit here going into the summer? Yeah, you know, I, I think there's a variety of ways to – and it's it's interesting that we talk about this uh, and we, we waited to kind of touch on quarterback a little bit as a few things have, have come out since we last uh, shot some of these uh, videos because, you know, I've, I've seen a a quarterback ranking, you know, like quarterback position ranking, you know. I've seen some various things, and I think Tech was like, what, eighth or ninth out of the, the Big 12 as far as like QB room ranking kind of thing. I'm not trading these two guys for anything. Uh, I, you know, obviously we're biased here, and that and that's fine. Uh, I don't apologize to be anything other than than that. Um, you know, and 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 a, and a list is based off of maybe could be what they've already done, what we project them to do. How do they translate to being a pro prospect? Um, you know, all, there's all different ways to kind of uh, put caveats on, on putting a list together. But uh, yeah, you have two guys that have won Big Twelve games. I think uh, we we are certainly all uh, very high on on your your one and one a however you want to to look at that. I'll give you my opinion here in a second, but I certainly understand the 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 list ranking. Uh, I know that I kind of wanted to be offended, but I kind of get it too. In that, it's a fair question to ask: Has Tyler Shuck been healthy? No. You know, I think when he's been healthy, we we all have loved what he's been able to do. But is it a fair question to ask aloud? You know, can he – he hadn't been healthy. And so why why would we assume otherwise? Certainly get it. Um, I think with Barron, we all know the talent. I think we've seen even in a loss, uh, which is key here, against Oklahoma State, you see, you know, the upside. You see the capability. You see the – arm angle, the quick release, the all the different kind of things, you know, putting up big numbers and, and things like that. But, you know, he, he only beat West Virginia, um, you know, as far as a starter goes. And then we we also saw him play a really rough game against Baylor, you know, and that was very hard on the eyes. And it was just a, a bit of a mismatch. Again, that's a really good defense. Uh, I think Oklahoma State at the time that you saw them was one of the better defenses in the Big 12 before they had some injuries and a guy quit, you know, on the interior of the D-line and things like that. Uh, but I, uh, it's very clear to me that you, you, you have two guys that can absolutely, I think, uh, help you contend for a Big 12 championship. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw that on there. And I think that I feel very comfortable and and saying that, uh, and I, I think that unfortunately, the way it's gone around here the last what eight to twelve years, you more than likely will need both of these guys uh, this season, uh, just because. And and I think every school in the Big Twelve last year, and you know, with I don't know if there was an exception there or not, but uh, like I'm talking about not the new ones, but the 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 other nine. Everybody had to have more than one guy start a game, uh, and sometimes for long periods. And obviously, Texas Tech had had uh, three different guys start games. And you know, even uh, even the Max Duggan thing. You know, Chandler Morris yeah. got hurt. It just happened to be the opener, and the Max Duggan took the baton and ran with it. But uh, 
I think uh, – what is your general perception of where the quarterback battle is, uh, Ben, heading into the summer? I think that Tyler Shock has won every battle that he's been a part of so far, and he's the super senior, and it's hard to – the way he finished the year, I think it's hard to take away his job. It's going to be, in my opinion, one of those things where Barron's really going to have to just outright just, you know, do some incredible things in fall camp to to get that job. And, you know, two, you know, two of my favorite. Well, one of them, Tyler Shucks never lost a game. He started here. Um, you know, if he didn't get hurt in Austin, that would be different. But he got hurt, started and finished. I mean. So he's seven and zero in those games, and then, you know, you just think back to you were talking about the list when Tyler Shuck first got to Tech, he was on some mock draft first overall type of lists, and here we are two years later. He yes, he's had injuries, but all the talent's still there. Like he can still be that guy, um, and so I, I feel really good about the position. You got two guys who you know can play and and fit the offense, and going into year two in this offense, so. I mean, it looks good to me. Yeah, and the, and the key was you got through the spring and you've gotten through the 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 portal window yeah. and and you you've got them both and I think that's that's key because I think uh, you've got guys that uh, you can win with and yeah. So if, if we go back to and I mentioned this during the spring broadcast uh, of the game, but like the the two things that I think were, were big takeaways for each guy. And we'll get into the race here in a second, but I think uh, I think Shucks like completion percentage in in fall camp during team periods was in the 74 percent range, and I think that is that is that is pretty good. And again, just in team periods, and I think that their reps between him and Tyler and Barron, I think they were pretty much within five of each other with like the first team and, and things like that, or, or first and second team. I mean, just overall reps. So, I mean, they were, they were equal. And I, so everybody got a, a fair shot at it, but I think, you know, Tyler's completion percentage was, was of note. And I think last year it was in the low sixties. So I think he was, you know, 15 ish percentage points better, maybe, you know, 12 to 13, depending on, I, I can't remember if it was 73, 74%. And last year was in like 59, 60 range. Anyway, you, you get the idea, uh, speaking in a generality there, that he he was very much improved from a percentage, uh, completion percentage standpoint. And then the thing with Barron was, is I think last spring he had somewhere in the uh, the range of, of like 75 to 80 negative plays, which is take a sack, um, you, you, you know, variety of, of mistakes there where you just kind of uh, compound the problem by taking, uh, you know, uh, whether you get tackled, you get sacked, you know, w- whatever the case may be. And those are somewhat subjective in the spring as it's based on a whistle, but you get the idea. Yeah. And I think this spring it was in the 15 play range. So I think he did a, a much better job of – of limiting the damage when things weren't going well. And sometimes that's what a QB's job is. It's not – sometimes it, it it is about making plays, but sometimes it's about avoiding the bad ones, you know, and keeping the offense afloat or able to punt it, you know, instead of, you know, kicking it to the other team or ending up way behind the chains or whatever. Uh, I, I do agree with your your sentiment in that I think that Tyler did so well at the end of the season. I think Barron not only needed to be better than him, but maybe quite a bit better than him uh, to ultimately get the nod. Uh, I'm not going to be surprised if you get a, a, a decision announced at some point this summer, just kind of dropped into your lap. Um, you know, maybe they want to take him to Big 12 Media Days, talking about Tyler. Yeah. Uh, but this is a this is a, a draft prospect. Make no mistake, and, and I, I I think that's what the NFL folks have have repeatedly told Joey and and, and Zach Kitley and, and guys like that that they are extremely impressed when they get up uh, close to him, see him in action, able to visit with him on on a, on a board and talk. You know, a variety of different. Uh, schemes and things like that that's where he really excels and I think that people were were somewhat surprised by his wheels last year and his ability to use his legs 
as, as a weapon of sorts because you know we've had it in our brain oh, like don't run him he's fragile he's going to get dinged up whatever uh, I think he he kind of proved that he could play you know a stretch there and and be involved in the run game and and stay healthy I will tell you that Along those lines, I think uh, Tyler ended the spring up to near two thirty-five, uh, and he's he's added some some bulk. <laughs> uh, and I think you know, with that in mind, I think Barron was up to about two seventeen, uh, just to be a little bit more durable. So I think they've both added some good weight. Tyler hadn't slowed down at all. I mean, I've seen him run and and do various things and. Yeah, you you want to you want to you know be be smart with the run game. You want to try to get down and and not you know. But these guys are competitors, and you know both of them. I think Tyler just was late to to slide uh, when he got hurt, and then Baron, he's just back there in the backfield and got dinged up too, and then was never really right with his ankle. And I think you know. I don't know if we're not going to label Barron as injury prone, uh, even though he was dinged up for most of, uh, of last year. So I think it's just kind of the nature of the position. But I do think Tyler was uh, a bit better uh, this this spring. And it's not a knock on on Barron as much as it, it's just I think it, Tyler had, had a really good stretch. And I know people kind of watch that spring game. And you kind of have some takeaways there. That that's one of 15 practices. There's a lot of audibles not on. There's a lot of blitzes that they weren't necessarily, you know, prepared for, or just, just some parameters in that game uh, to to where you know they can't really put their best foot forward. So the, there, there's some of that. But I think the big scrimmage a couple of weeks before the spring game was kind of one where it was a Saturday scrimmage, and I knew that uh, the staff had felt like, okay, this is, this is where, you know, and, and, and Tyler looked really, really good. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think, I think that is something that, you know, is it's, I, I'm just going to be really surprised if it's not his job. I think the people, people are maybe that aren't in Lubbock or maybe, you know, that there's still some thought, okay, this is still very much a battle. And, and maybe it is, maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe I'm, I'm the one that's off on it. Uh, but I, I really feel like Tyler is QB one right now. And I think that's the way that the season will start. Uh, I don't know if you could get an announcement this summer or not. I'm kind of curious myself. I don't know that, uh, but, uh, but maybe the competition does go into the, uh, into fall camp. I just, I just know, you know, from talking to Joey on his coaches show some last season, I think that he verbalized some, some things allowed to where he wondered if, if, uh, if, if, if they hurt the team by not being more forthright about who their guy was and letting everybody know it. I think there's some different opinions inside the building about if, if it would be good to do that. So everybody kind of knows the deal or if it's better to leave it as a competition to where the, the team part of it doesn't really, no, but my my thought is too is those those kids know. Yeah. I think they know who's probably had a better spring. They also know that they can win with both guys, whoever the it ends up being the starter. But uh, those those will be my thoughts uh, on on the QB position. And 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 I will say this about Jake Strong: I think he had a really good spring. Uh, I think for a, for a true freshman, I think that what he is was trying to learn is that you know in high school. You know, you, typically when you see a team, they're, they're going to line up in, in in a similar style of defense almost every play. You know, you're going to kind of know where the safeties are. You're going to know kind of what they're in for the most part. I think when you're going against a Tim DeRuiter or coach defense, it's a lot like what you're going to see in the Big 12 in that you're not really sure what they're in, and they may show you one look, and then as soon as the ball is snapped, they are – in a different one. And I think the, the, the seeing the different defenses is something that kind of, you know, what was, 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 uh, you know, again, and this is normal. I mean, mm -hmm. this is part of being a freshman and, and all those things, but I think that's your, your one, two and three uh, heading into fall camp. Uh, and we'll, we'll kind of see what happens with the, uh, the lead spot, but I, yeah, you do have two really good players that I think you can win games with. And I just happen to think that Tyler probably gets that, that nod to this point, but it's not a knock on Baron at all. It's just more about what Tyler has done and, 
you know, and the, and the beautiful thing about Baron is that the future is his, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. Tyler, this is going to be his last year and Tyler uh, will, will is looking to make them. And he's an alpha, man. I'll just tell you, he studies hard. He commands the locker room. He's outspoken and opinionated uh, as we've all seen. Uh, doesn't shy away from it. He's got utmost confidence. He's got some, I mean, kind of reminds me of BJ Simmons from that standpoint back in the day, you know, what what is not necessarily the most loud and boisterous rah rah guy, but like when when it starts hitting the fan, he he can kind of you you start to see his his swag and confidence and and all those things, and I like it. I'm here for it because he he takes things personal, things motivate him. He studies extremely hard at this stuff, and so I think that's some of the differences there too. Yeah, and then he'll you know take the ball, pull it down, and run over a defender, which certainly you know. Yeah. Leads, by, leads by example too. Yeah, the, the quarterback room shapes up really well for now and the future. Barron has three years left. Jake Strong has five to play four. You have a four star committed in Will Hammond. So who's who's a big time prospect? Zach Kelly's doing really good work with yeah. that room. So yeah, Th- yeah, this is yeah. Will, Will Hammond is Will Hammond is is got you know he he this is a this is a Graham Harrell type get. This is a. Oh man, you you got you got one of those. Like you know, th- there's it, it's a pretty deep year for quarterbacks in the state of Texas. Uh, I think for this next class, but you you got one that, that registers nationally. I think he's done some elite eleven stuff. I think that you know you, you've you've got a guy that is going to be really really good here. So you kind of start to see it stacked, and I think you feel pretty good about uh, that position group. Not not with what is here, but what is on the way as well. Yep. Yeah. And not to look over, overlook Wyoming, but that Oregon game could be a Tyler Shock revenge type of game. That's just <laughs> something that maybe I only find interesting. But oh, no, I, I, I just can't imagine that anybody on either side of that deal would have ever thought that this would be a possibility uh, when he transferred from Oregon to Texas Tech. three years and, later. Yeah. yeah. And so many of those series are kind of moved or canceled or adjusted and Tyler could have already graduated from here or transferred out again. Who who the heck knows? But yeah, it shapes up certainly as uh as something that will be a a storyline for sure. Uh and, and not that he left with a ton of animosity, but I, I think that yeah, he will he won't lack for motivation in that game for sure. Yeah. Good stuff, level. Uh guys, thank you for subscribing to Red Raider Sports. Stay tuned and then we'll continue this series.